From Sri Lanka to Lebanon to Ghana, the IMF offers credit lines to alien economies around the world. Described as the lender of last resort, it has 190 member states. Formed in 1945, the IMF and the World Bank are closely linked but have slightly different remits. The World Bank aims to eradicate poverty and focuses on financing projects in developing nations. The IMF monitors exchange rates, stabilizes global monetary systems, promotes financial cooperation and offers short-term loans to struggle members. In the 77 years since their creation, they've seen the world's financial systems become more intricately intertwined and interdependent. Any disruptions reverberate around the world. Russia's war in Ukraine is a prime example. The resultant energy and food shortages are being felt almost everywhere. The COVID pandemic is another. Analysts warn this crisis may threaten the future of the organization. Some analysts say the IMF's lending capacity could soon be stretched to its limits, as poor countries which are locked out of international debt market are forced to turn to the fund for support. But critics say conditions attached to IMF loans often hurt developing countries and favor richer members. Well, you just need to look at, at the result. The result has been that uh, developing countries have consistently been suppressed in their economic development and their resources have been extracted very efficiently and very cheaply for the benefit of the industrialized countries. Now, in a rare outspoken statement, the world's most controversial financial firefighter has called on the UK, one of its richest members, to scale back on plans to cut taxes for the rich. The IMF says it will create deeper inequality, a sentiment critics are calling ironic for an institution that they say does just that in the poorest and most desperate parts of the world.